while a lot of people see a manuscript, you only see the part where the figure lives and you can see the bar charts and the beautiful data sets and tables. Not many people spend the time teaching a PhD how to organize from scratch. It's kind of embarrassing to admit it, I learned this by now, but nobody ever showed me that, so... Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community created for you as a PhD to make sure you have motivation, practical tips, and peer support in your journey. So why don't you join me with this video and learn more on how you improve your productivity as PhD. You know, we all have mummy brain by the end of our PhD, and that is also why permanent head damage is also abbreviated as PhD. Hi. Hello, Megan. Uh, I'm calling because my apartment has no water. Um, let me check it for you. No, your apartment hasn't paid the water bills. That's why we cut it. Really? What day is today? In my previous video, I share about how I organize folder and files on my computer and I show you the system on how I make sure myself don't frustrate my future self from searching folders. And I hope it was relevant and maybe applicable to some of your situation. But today I'd like to take you behind the screen and have a closer look at my Excel files because we all start from raw data and from raw data you have to process them with statistics and analysis, sorting, and then you get the figure table. While a lot of people see a manuscript, you only see the part where the figure lives and you can see the bar charts and the beautiful data sets and tables. Not many people spend the time teaching a PhD how to organize from scratch to the final figures. If you are new in PhD, how do you safely organize this really intimidating big table into something you can trace and you can re-evaluate over time? Keep watching because I'm going to show you a one directional procedure that you can proceed with care and you can write notes and justify to your coworker it's totally shareable and you can always revisit your procedure and you know exactly which step you've made wrong if you find a mistake. So by making this video, I want to make sure you will be faster in processing your data. You will be more confident with your decision on how you manipulate your and you can communicate it clearly so you improve clarity of your data processing. So let me start by sharing that I always put data that is raw, untouched. I will put them as a separate tab file and I just name that as R-A-W. They are raw and the rule is don't edit anything on that one sheet. Don't edit anything on that one sheet. The next tab, you copy everything and you start from a copied version of that raw data. So in case accidentally your cat push a button on your computer, you have missing values, you know exactly where to go back to and you can find everything back in the raw state. So the next step after you have copied the raw is to make a new tab and make copy of the raw data file and start from there. There is one thing I've learned very late that I can add a row above my data and add it as a title of what this matrix of data is. If I want to sort it, I will copy it again and I make a table and I will sort the data. What I go ahead to do is I copy the same table and on the top, that is the title, you will describe exactly what you've done. So from all the steps of data processing, you basically can stick to the same tab. You can make it longer and longer table and add more and more columns that you are processing the data in, in the way you want it to be um, distributed, organized 
and you can keep track of them because in case you're sorting the data with one column missing, then you can always go back to the original data file. This is a way for a human to follow which step it is. Uh, when you're plotting your graph, make a new tab so that you have all the table and figure you want to show to your advisor. Um, if you're reporting to your advisor, it might be helpful to include pictures and people don't always know that. You can insert a figure or a picture there's one trick I've learned is you can change the color of your tab by right-click on the tab. When you try to present the data, you have that little extra information that you could have to open a PowerPoint slide to show. Quite a friendly touch that you have that picture ready for your advisor and you don't have to go between different files. So I found it pretty handy in, with that regard. And I also may have used R to analyze some of the data files. So I copy and paste the word for R script just next to it. Uh, for redundancy purpose, I always have an R notebook already with my data file. But I always like to just put R script next to the data so that it's clear for my future self. If I wonder what I have done to that data set, I will, I will be able to find out. In my original data, would make a summary with a table border and say, and close in this border is the data I exported for R and this is exactly the script I ran and this is the result. When you have the data in your file, you have numerical views of everything. I also found conditional formatting really powerful, either seeing the bar charts on the cells that like you can conditional format it to show the data trend or you can use a heat map to see whether these experiment treatment groups are very different just by visualizing the heat map. I also find using conditional formatting really helpful because you can make a condition format of highlighting all the p-value lower than 0.05. So instead of looking for that value, you can highlight it and you will know it is significant. You can also concatenate column, you can glue two columns together. Instead of naming everything by typing again and again, you can do a concatenation uh, command to make two columns shown together as a new column. The same thing is you can break columns into different values of uh, category. So sometimes if you have typed the whole label of the, uh, of the date and then which treatment and replicate group, then you can do a separation of these values by column and then you can sort all the data. You can also replace all these digital values into more uh, legible values. Someone can read and understand better by control and find and replace. Make sure you have version control. If you have major simplification of your data and you're deciding to get rid of something to just focus on the data set, it's always important to do the save as and date the file. You have the old file as well as the new one. In case you change your mind, you go back to the old version, you have it with you. When making a table for a manuscript, I also enjoy using Microsoft Excel a lot more than Microsoft Word because of a few reasons. First is when you have a limit of page margin on Word, and then if you have a long table, it can have a big problem. It will not flow through and all your um, column width is going to be squashed. And you have to have a lot of major changes to the format of the table. But this doesn't happen when you do Excel table and there is no limit on how wide your table is as long as you keep building the content. And you can also adjust row heights later to fit it as the dimension required for the publication. It comes in handy to make sure your, your unit sits exactly as where it should be. By making a new column and setting the digit, uh, the unit right there, so that everything is nice and aligned and you can add all your optional table line by drawing the table out and you have a lot of options on Excel on that. So I really enjoy using Excel to make table one and the way to export it for your publication is just by, if you haven't already known it, is by printing the document as PDF and 
Yes, and you can print the selected area as PDF, so everything has to fit on a page when you select fitting on the same page. Um, to me, that's the most efficient way to make a table for your publication, and you can also type the figure legend, um, the table legend on the top. Um, it's no different from Word document, but it's so, um, it's so much easier because it's designed to make tables. I, I don't hope this makes sense, it's not too obvious. But it took me a while to figure out um, it's, not, it's not very friendly to use Word to make tables. So this is a more technical video. I hope you find my sharing helpful. And if it is too basic for you, you're probably in good shape. And don't forget this may be not straightforward to some of your colleagues or some of your younger students. So please don't hesitate to share this video with them and you save yourself from a whole hour of explanation on how you process your data. Um, so please share with me in the comments below if you found this a good resource for PhD and do you think someone can benefit from this and if, if they do then you can introduce my videos to them. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want more content like this. I'm here to make sure I explain all the obvious problems that may or may not be obvious to PhD at different stage. I'm hoping my videos is a good start and a conversation exchange can go on so that we can spend less time being technically challenged and more time being creative and innovative for our research. Thank you for watching and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you the next time.